Yo, what is up? Welcome to Ninja Geek Games. If you're a fan of hardy and militant mountain dwellers or swift and nimble forest folk, then Ironwood may be for you. This is a highly asymmetric tactical card game for two players from Mind Clash Games. Here, players take on the role of one of the available factions, either the Ironclad or the Woodwalkers, where each round you play cards to maneuver your forces around the map and initiate combat, as well as carry out actions specific for your endgame objective. Each faction has a different primary goal, whether to build huge forges or locate mysterious totems that must be completed in order to win the game. Now, whilst renowned for generally producing some heavy and complex games, as well as having a fantastic booth and crew at conventions, this is one of the smaller boxed games for Mind Clash, and one that I picked up at Essen that doesn't have a space theme. Here, each player has a unique deck of pre-constructed cards used to carry out actions and combat, as well as their own force of hardy warriors. During play, you'll need to use your limited turns effectively to outwit your opponent, claim sought-after crystals, and strategically bluff your way to victory. Let's take a look. The board represents the land of Ironwood where each faction has a predetermined set of their forces. So the Ironclad make use of the mountain areas and paths while the Woodwalkers live deep within the forests. And during play, you'll be moving your pieces within these faction specific areas. Each faction comes with their own player board that has an overview of the round, which is slightly different for each and a unique deck of pre-constructed cards. These detail one or more actions that are specific to the faction's playstyle and have some pretty cool artwork. The Woodwalkers have a stack of totem tokens that need to be located during play, but the Ironclad have double-sided forges that they need to construct, as well as a second class of fighter, the Golems. What I thought was a great touch and very thematic is that the Woodwalker tokens are all made of wood and the Ironclad have these chunky metal pieces where the quality is just awesome. In fact, the production value throughout is to a very high standard. The remaining components are generic for each player, that are the Larrymore Crystals, which are the main resource in the game, and standard markers for certain game effects. The quality of these components is superb, and I love the fact that those for each faction are made from a different material, which is a nice touch. To play the game, it's pretty straightforward. Players take turns choosing one card from hand and then carry out the actions listed. After three turns each, the round is over and there's a little upkeep, and the game continues. The winner of the game is the player to complete their faction objective first, where for the Woodwalkers they need to locate totems and bring them back to the board edge, but the Ironclad need to lay foundations in the mountains on which they construct forges. During the game, each faction takes turns playing a card from hand until they've both played three. To remind you of which cards were used, every time one is played, it's stored in the action slot area on your player board. These cards have one or more actions to resolve, and some may require crystals to be spent to allow you to take more. Movement for each faction is different. Woodwalker fighters can move from forest to forest as a single unit and can cross mountain ridges through paths and must stay within the terrain type where the action will indicate the number of individual units that they can move. The ironclad instead move as groups or warbands, again where the card will indicate the number that they can move. Now here, a warband may consist of any number of single units in one mountain area and they move along ridges from mountain to mountain. Each of these mountains has a cool metal-like name with the centre of the board Ferrum being the capital and counts as a forge for most game purposes. The Ironclad also have use of a wicked awesome jewel that they can use to mine the mountains for crystal. This follows the same movement restrictions as for the fighters but is able to gain bonuses when doing so. Here, every time the drill moves to a new mountain space, you move this marker one space along the drill track on the Ironclad player board and each location provides a bonus. These include crystals that go to a cargo hold, drawing cards to hand, peeking at Woodwalker vision cards that I'll talk about later, and even deploying extra units to the board. However, if the drill arrives at a forge, instead of claiming the next bonus, the Ironclad player can instead transfer all the collected crystals to the available area on their player board that can now be spent, and this is the main way the Ironclad boost their storage of resources. Combat is an important action and part of the game that happens often and occurs between mountain and adjacent forest areas with any number of units. However, a battle can't take place between a mountain space and a forest area around the edge of the board. The attacking and defending faction first decide on whether they're gonna wager a card from hand and then reveal them at the same time. Each card shows three combat stats that are attack, defense, and dominance in various value combinations. This will happen simultaneously where each player loses units based on the difference between their defense value and the opponent's attack value. Then you add the number of remaining units in your faction to the dominance value on the card played and the faction with the highest dominance value wins the combat. Ties are classed as wins for the attacker where the loser then has to retreat. 
Some action cards provide boost to combat values or crystals for victory. However, the Ironclad can make use of golems that deal extra damage and higher defense values so are harder to remove from the game. Also, if combat takes place in a mountain space with a forge or ferrum, the Ironclad get extra bonuses to their damage values. Each faction has a different game objective in order to win. Ironclad first need to lay foundations at mountain spaces around the edge of the board. Later, five crystals can be spent to turn these into forges, and if the Ironclad can build three of these before the Woodwalkers complete their objective, they win the game. These forges can also bring in extra benefits such as providing more locations where the drill can drop off its cargo of crystals or where units can be recruited, as well as supporting combat bonuses. The Woodwalkers gain vision cards through actions during the game that indicate a mountain area where totems can be located, and this is generally hidden knowledge for that faction. If they're able to clear that mountain space of ironclad units, further cards can allow Woodwalkers to place a totem in one of the controlled forests adjacent, where they can also claim crystals if the totem was placed closer to the centre of the board. During future turns, the Woodwalkers will then need to move, taking the totem with them to the outer forest area to secure it, but at the end of every round, the totem fades and could be removed from play if they take too long. If they collect three of these totems before the ironclad can complete their objective, then the Woodwalkers win the game. During play, some cards provide ongoing actions where the cards are marked with tokens. These get stored at the top of the player board area and either when used or at the end of the round, markers are removed until the action becomes depleted, but it's a good way to get free actions or action boosts. At the end of the round, you have to discard all the cards that were played. But one important factor here is that each player has three base cards with fixed actions. For Ironclad, these have standard movement and attacks, but also provide the actions for laying foundations and constructing the forges. This is the same for the Woodwalkers, where their base cards allow them to gain vision cards and reveal them to place totems onto the board. When discarding played cards, the base cards always go back to your hand, so you have use of these every single round, but you do get to draw more special cards as well. Lastly, crystals can be spent at these stages to deploy units onto the board to bolster areas. Ironclad fighters go to forges or ferrum, and Woodwalker units must go to the board edge spaces. The game is elegantly simple but very tactical. I was surprised by how quickly I was able to learn the rules and even teach this to non-gamers who were able to pick this up with little effort. The rulebook is still 22 pages for the two-player game, but most of the actions are self-explanatory and I was very happy with that. It's also quite well balanced. Could the cards in hand give you a better chance to victory? Perhaps, but I do believe it's how you use them. I've played and won and lost as both factions, although my favourite is the Ironclad. I think it's the components, golems and the draw mechanic, and the fact you have to spend your crystals quickly for fear of losing them. This is because the Woodwalkers can attack both Ferrum and the Drill to steal crystals, which can be a massive setback for the Ironclad. So get those forges built to allow the Drill to drop off the cargo to spend. As the Woodwalkers always take their turn first, this could be a good strategy to keep the opponent on their steel capped toes. At the end of the round, it's an easy decision to spend crystals to deploy the Woodwalker units. They'll want large groups to clear mountain spaces and secure totems, but for the Ironclad, it can be more difficult to decide. It's costly and you need a lot of crystals to build those forges. As base cards go back to hand every round, you do have some insight into what the opponent may do. If they've played only special cards for actions and have three cards in hand, you'll have a good opportunity to second guess combat stats on these base cards and the value are not particularly high here. But you don't even have to wager a card in combat, just take the hit and walk away, especially if you know you'll lose, and have a critical card for the next turn, although that doesn't happen often. Ironwood also has quite a robust solo mode where you can play as either faction. Here the bot takes its actions based on certain circumstances for the end game objectives, where it will be in a particular stance or mode of aggression. You then reveal cards for it where the icons provide its actions. But depending on what you're doing, this will alter how the bot moves, where to and its purpose, and I thought it was quite clever, although fiddly. For example, each bot faction has three different types of movement with a number of priorities based on its circumstance or what it could do, and this can take time to resolve and is frustrating when learning the game as it should be a fast-paced game. Regardless, when you've nailed how it works, it's pretty awesome, although I do much prefer the two-player mode. Overall, I think Ironwood is a great game. Including setup, you can get games done in less than 30 minutes, and it was much more tactical and deep than I initially gave it credit for. For a fairly rules-like game, it's reactive and strategic, with a little bluffing, and I like that. You'll end up with various combinations of cards and hands, but the base cards provide you with at least something that you can do each turn. I love how asymmetric it is where each faction does have a favourite 
of play style, but it's the cards in your hand and how you use them that's important. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. This is Ninja Geek Games. Cheers.